creativity and providing you with the tools to create your own unique masterpieces. Well, hello, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Sorry about last night. Sorry about last night. I had deliveries to do and I did not get back to the office till one o'clock in the morning. Started my day about 7 a.m. out there on the road and I got back uh, to Ocala, Florida about 1 a.m. So I had to postpone class to tonight. So thank you all for joining me. I don't know why I'm pointing over here and over there. I should be pointing right there. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. <clears throat> so tonight we're going to actually do some uh, projects that require putting parts together. Uh, we're going to make some plant stands, very simple project that we can make some very decorative, cool designs and stuff, but it's going to require some joinery, some uh, dados and grooves or mortise and tenons or what have you. We're going to have some joinery in a sense, uh, and I'm going to show you about that. We're going to talk about the uh, dog bone fillet tool. We're going to talk about, um, you know, just... Uh, scaling our projects up and all of that good stuff. There's a, there's going to be a lot of fun stuff that we're going to discuss. So once again, it's not necessarily about the project itself. It's about the things that we learn from creating that project that we can apply to our own project. So, so with that being said, I'm going to take a sip of Sprite. It's not a paid advertisement. Sprite didn't pay me to say that, but, uh, and we're going to get started. Uh, so once again, thanks for joining me. And, uh, hey, Ken, Ken Singleton's in the group. Hey, Ken, uh, just to uh, let you know, I did get your file. Uh, Going to be working on that model and everything. So you'll hear from me in the next day or two. I've been out of the country and all that. So uh, we'll get on that. All right. Anyway, let's get over to, let's get over to our design. right about now okay so the first thing is uh we're gonna this is gonna be a single-sided job uh now it could be a two-sided job if you want to do some decorative carving on the sides of on each side of your uh you know these different plant stands that we're going to be laying out and stuff but uh we're going to be doing a single-sided job uh as of right now uh, my project board, I just laid it out to a simple 24 by 18 by three quarter inch board. Now, we probably, you know, may change the thickness of our material depending on the uh, type of project and, you know, plant stand and all that we're going to make. But for right now, I'm going, I'm working with three quarter inch material uh, and uh, going to go from there. Now, as far as your uh, zero, Z zero position in the Vetric software, you can work from the top of the material. In my case, I'm working from the machine bed. I always zero out my Z on my waste board. Uh, so you'll see that I have the machine bed chosen because that means the waste board will be my Z zero. And because of my particular setup, I have a little 90 degree fence that all my projects reference off of on, on my table. So I work from the bottom left corner, but you can start from the center. You can start from any of the four corners, wherever you want. And so that's my setup, 24 by 18, I'm working off the machine bed as my Z0, and uh, I'm starting from the bottom left corner. Again, you can adjust this. I'm going to be providing files to you guys, and you can adjust it to meet your needs and your requirements and stuff. Um, <clears throat> so let's get out of our job setup here, and let's get back to our drawing. Now, I keep zooming out. I don't want you guys seeing that stuff yet, but we're going to have some decorative shapes and things. We're going to talk about those in a moment. But let's talk about laying out a very simple plant stand. Now, you may not know it. You may know it because you, you guys have been watching for a while and you've been using your Vetric for probably even longer. Uh, we have guidelines that we can pull out of, the, uh, out of the rulers here. We can pull a vertical guideline or a horizontal guideline. And up here in this corner right here, we can turn those guidelines on and off by clicking on it. So you'll see I've got guidelines laid out and stuff. I just don't have them visible right now. So now we're going to get rid of my ugly mug on the screen and we're going to zoom right into the project software so that we can uh, focus on that more than so my face. And um, what I've got here is I pulled out a series of guidelines and I laid out 
kind of a uh, measurements and stuff that I want to work with. Now, just so you know, when you pull out a guideline, you just click your hold your left mouse button down and drag your guideline wherever you want. And you can snap to your project. You can snap to different areas and things like that. Uh, however you want to do. And if you hover your mouse over a right uh, over a guideline, you're going to get this two headed arrow. And if I right click, that's going to open up the properties for that guideline. I can change the position of the guideline here. I can change the angle of that guideline. I could delete it if I want to. I could lock that guideline to prevent it from dragging around, you know, uh, from moving, you know, accidentally bumping it and moving it. I can create parallel guides to it and everything. I can create parallel guides based on a position of my ruler, or I can create a guideline, a parallel guideline based on an offset or a position offset that I, um, that I put in. And so <clears throat> if we look at that, my first guideline here, I laid out and I created a parallel guide one inch away. And then I also, from that guideline, created another parallel guide one and a half inch away. And I did this on both sides of this project board. From the top parallel guideline or the guideline, I made a parallel guide that's two inches down. And from my bottom guideline, I made a guide that's five inches up. Now, I also just dropped in a center of the guide just to, you know, when I was showing you guys and girls. But um, <clears throat> so I have these guidelines and I can turn them off by clicking on this corner. But I can also go up to my view here. And under guidelines, I can turn off the visibility. I can delete the guides. I can lock them so they can't be moved around. Uh, all kinds of things in here. Uh, and that's under the view bar. But for now, let's talk about my uh, shape that I have here. So I've got a shape that is uh, roughly 10 inches wide by eight inches tall. Not roughly. It's exactly because we see it over here, 10 by eight. So it's 10 by eight. Uh, and basically I'm wanting my plant stand to be, you know, uh, 10 inches tall or eight inches tall. Sorry, eight inches tall. It's going to be kind of a low profile to the ground, but we can make it as big or as tall as we want, depending on what we're doing. But I'm just making a very simple plant stand to, uh, put a clay pot on. Now this plant stand is going to uh, have uh, two parts that connect together by a joint. So if we're going to take a quick minute, we're going to jump over here to SketchUp, Google SketchUp. And let me uh, turn my guides off for a minute so that uh, you all can see what's happening here. And let's do this. Let me zoom in here. And let me orbit around. So we're going to have two separate parts that are joined together. And if I were to move one part, let me grab this one here and move it for a moment. You're going to see that we have a notch cut out in the top of one. And you're going to notice on my other one that there's no notch cut out there. I haven't put it in yet. I was drawing it as uh, I was getting ready for you guys and girls. But when those two parts are joined together, that's going to create this little plant stand, this little decorative plant stand. Not, not very decorative right now. It's just a very basic plant stand. Uh, you can make it in all different sizes. You can have all kinds of different looks and things as far as your feet go and stuff. But this is very simple plant stand. Now, currently right now, uh, <clears throat> this plant stand, if I look at it, in my view, my camera view, if I look at it from the top, I'm sorry, let's try that again. If I look at it from the front uh, and looking at, it, looking at it square on here, um, if I were to uh, create a circle, like let's imagine my pot and stuff and all, uh, basically the bottom of the pot is, is somewhere around two and nine sixteenths. Uh, there is a taper up here at the top, and I like how I drew that circle down in the bottom there. Uh, that was nice of me. I'll move it up in a minute. But, um, yeah, let's actually move it up now. Uh, let's undo that, and let's get on my, get on my surface here. Work. Still drew it at the bottom. All right, that's all right. We'll move it up. 
Let's. Oh. <laughs> I'm such a. Oh my God. Oh, I'm drawing it from the bottom. Oh, standard view. Let's look at it from the uh, back here. There we go. That's the top of my plant stand right there. Notice I'm not centered right now. That was pretty nice of me. But uh, I was drawing it at the bottom. Uh, how funny was that? Uh, so basically, um, it would help if I was centered a little better. But, you know, about two and seven sixteenths, two and a half inches is what I kind of designed it for, for a little clay pot that tapers down to about a two and a half inch. And if I were to uh, pull this up, let's uh, zoom out a little bit so we can see if I was to pull this up to however tall the plant stand is. And if I grab this here and move this out. See, is it going to let me move it out? Is it going to let me move it? Let's see if it'll let me. Will it let me? It'll let me move it that way. There's a pull button that will let me pull that. Bear with me a second. Let me. Uh, da -dum -dum -dum. Now we're getting somewhere. <clears throat> so the top, roughly that top measurement will be about six inch diameter. So it's like a little six inch clay pot, if you will, and everything. Uh, so this is kind of just a little representation, nothing fancy or anything like that. Just to kind of give you a visual of where we're heading for with this square right here. OK, where we're heading for with that square. And then we're going to get into some decorative uh, things over here later. But right now, let's focus on this. So I'm going to turn my guides back on. And basically what this is going to help me do, uh, it, it's uh, you know, there's a lot of lines on here and stuff and everything. But what it's going to allow me to do is it's going to allow me to um work with my shape. Let me get rid of these guidelines here on the edge. I don't need them. I just need those in the middle. It's going to let me kind of manipulate my shape and uh, draw and trim everything out to what I need. So what I've got going on here, I'm going to take my line tool and I'm going to snap a line down on this one inch mark here. And then I'm going to drag it up to the intersection of this uh, one and a half inch mark. And I'm going to come across to this one and a half inch mark, and then I'm going to taper down to this one inch mark. All right, and that's going to create kind of my legs here. Same thing up here. I'm going to kind of on this inner guide here, I'm going to snap and come down to here, come across, snap again, and taper up and snap again. When I say snap, I'm left clicking. I'm snapping to that point and then left clicking. As long as I got that smart snapping and everything on, you know, I can lay things out pretty easily. Now that I have my general shape and everything, I don't need the guidelines on anymore. And I'm going to focus on the general shape here. And what I want to do is I need to kind of make this one shape. I don't need this box anymore. So I'm going to uh, come in with my trim tool and I'm going to trim away these two lines. And that's going to give me my general shape. And this could be any shape you want. We could have long, tall legs. We could put a shelf in. We could do all kinds of things. But this is just a very simple, basic, low profile, maybe for a little uh, sofa table type stand. Or uh, it could even be the floor or like a little shelf or something. Just a very low profile uh, stand, uh, maximum eight inch tall here. But I don't want it to be just all square and everything. I'd like to add a little bit of a decorative uh, shape to it and everything. So I'm going to go in to my node editing and I'm going to grab this center point here. And if I pull this up right now, it's a line, right? So I'm just getting, I'm just kind of pulling a point into that. I need to turn this span here. I need to turn that into a arc. I want to put a nice little arch here. So I'm going to right click while I'm in node editing mode. I'm going to right click and turn that to an arc. 
it's going to throw that arc up about 180 degrees and I'm just going to pull it down until I can just give myself a nice little subtle arc there. Okay. Just pull it where I want it and everything. Now my top, this is where my uh, plant's going to sit. So I'm going to leave that straight. But now I could come in here and on these spans and stuff, I could get really creative. I could turn this into a busy curve and I could, you know, throw a nice uh, curve into the lines and actually let's go the other direction. That would probably look a little bit better. Uh, I can come in and throw a nice curve into these lines, give myself a nice little foot or something. And, you know, I want this foot to match that foot. And I probably could, I probably could match it by pulling it and everything, but I'm, I'm, I don't want to sit there and fiddle with getting this one to look just like that one, you know, uh, with, with whatever I have and stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this off. If I do a profile cut on this, my router bit's not going to get in here. It's a sharp point. It's going to create a radius. So I'm going to just throw that radius in. Now I'm going to use the fillet tool, the fillet tool right here. And I'm going to use a normal fillet and I'm going to just going to throw like a half inch radius. Oops. So sorry. I'm going to throw a half inch radius into this thing. Too many decimal points. Uh, and I'm going to uh, click here and just kind of throw a radius in there. Uh, half inch is too much. Let's go quarter inch. I don't want it to be so big. Just a nice subtle little radius. There we go. All right. And down here, uh, I can get that sharp corner. So I'm happy with that. Uh, if I wanted to, if I wanted to go into node editing mode on this, I could, you know, give myself like a little foot shape. I could come in here and throw another point. I could right click and insert a point here. And um, I could come in to down here and insert another point. And I could take this point right. Oops, sorry. If I select this point down here right at the bottom first and I come down and turn that one off. I want just the bottom one. If I come in here and turn this one on, like click on it while I'm holding that shift key, I can hit the letter X on my keyboard and it's gonna pull that into alignment, those two nodes. Now I don't want this busy a curve, right? It stayed that curve. I wanna right click and turn that back into a line. And, you know, and now I've got just kind of like a little subtle foot coming out and I'm actually going to step it up a notch and I'm going to make that an arc and pull that arc out. I can only go 180 degrees and give myself a nice little foot there. Not much. And I could, uh, you know, change this and raise it up some. Like if I wanted to select this and use my up arrow key, I could kind of, you know, just keep hitting my up arrow key and give myself a little bit more of a, substantial foot, whatever you want to do. This is where you can kind of let your imagination run wild. But um, here I'm kind of good with that. So now that I'm good with that, again, getting this side to match, I'm not even going to attempt it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to bring a guideline just so I cut in the right place. I'm going to snap to the center of this thing and I'm going to cut the vector right there on that guideline and right there as well. And that will allow me, let's turn those guides back off. I'm going to be able to delete this now and I can take this shape and I can go to my mirror tool, my mirror tool under transform objects and I can create that mirror copy and I can just flip it right. Okay. Just flip it right. And now I have matching sides and stuff and I can come in here and in my join tool, that first icon on the last row of edit objects, I can come in there and join those two objects as one to create that shape. So that base, that foot, right? Now <coughs> we're going to have, two parts here. So I'm going to double click on this and I'm going to put it in transform mode by double clicking on it. I'm going to drag it over to the right. We'll set it down here for a minute and I'm going to hold my control key down and I'm going to drag another, what would help if I grab that middle box. I'm going to hold my control key down and I'm going to drag another copy off 
right there. So I have two copies and we, you know, now need to create the notches uh, where they're going to join. Now, one notch is going to be, uh, you know, created from the top down here. And the other notch is going to create it from the bottom up so that when those two parts fit together, they will kind of lock together to create that kind of a cross pattern. If I come in here and delete my circles. To create that cross pattern there, we're going to notch things together, you know, and, you know, in here, um, I want to make sure that, you know, uh, everything is right. My clay pot's going to be sitting above. This is a low profile. It's not going to be going up all the way to the pot, but I could, if I wanted to raise this up and make this taller on the top, you can do all kinds of things with it, but this is just a very basic low profile design. So what I've got going on here is uh, I'm going to come into my view guidelines and I'm going to delete all the guides uh, that are, that were in there because I don't need them anymore because I'm going to start using some new guidelines. I love working with guidelines um, to help me kind of lay things out and make sure they end up in the right spot. So I'm going to bring a guideline and snap to the center of this part here. See that little uh, little crosshair. A uh, little box with the crosshair lines lets me know I'm at the center of my uh, vector there. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing here and snap to the center of that one. And on this guideline, I'm going to be creating a uh, three. This is three quarter inch material. So I need a three quarter inch notch for those two parts to fit together and everything. So I'm going to create a relative guide going to the right, which is a positive number, three eighths of an inch. And then I'm also going to create a relative guide going to the left, which is a negative number. Anytime we go to the left on our X minus, that's a negative number. I'm going to create that. And that's going to give me my guidelines for my little three quarter inch notch. And the same thing here, I'm going to right click and relative guide. It's already got my numbers in there. So all I have to do is click create guide and then just remove that negative sign and create that guide again. So I have that there and that's going to kind of give me my little guides and all. Now, if I were to measure this, uh, if I were to come in, because there's a little bit of an arc here, if I were to come in to, and measure vertically on this center point here, from here to here, uh, roughly, it's about three quarters of an inch. It's not very thick. Uh, I would like a little bit more meat in there, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I want to, I want probably a, about an inch of meat in here. Uh, I don't want it so thin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close my measurement tool and there's no magic number. Like I can't come into node editing mode and I can't select these, uh, this object and select these nodes right here. And I can't, that I'm aware of, I can't sit there and pull this up and go, I might be able to, let me try. I'm going to pull it up, keeping my left mouse button held down. It says distance five. So if I say one, that's going to give me a value of one and I'm going to hit enter and it's going to move it up that one inch. I, I knew Vetric was smart enough to throw that function in there. It's the same thing. I, that's great. Gosh, love Vetric. All right. So I added an additional inch there, uh, which I didn't want to do. I actually wanted to go. Uh, I want I want a total of one and a half inches, so I need to add another three quarters. So I'm gonna do that again. We're gonna select these nodes. I'm gonna grab this node, start dragging it up. I'm gonna pause, keeping that left mouse button held down, and I'm gonna type in 0.75. You can see the value pop up at the bottom right of the screen there, and I'm gonna hit enter and throw it up that 0.75 inches. That means if I measure this now, let's get rid of uh, this measurement. Let's get rid of this measurement. Uh, is it going to let me delete that? New, no, not while I have it open. Now I can delete it. Let's go back in our measurement tool, and I should be able to measure from that center point to here vertically, and I should have one and a half inches. I love that function. I'm glad. So I've never done that. I've never tried it in Vetric uh, to see if they added that functionality to it to where I could actually specify a distance that I want to move a node or selected nodes, 
plural, uh, single node org to select the nodes. And I'm so happy to know that that function is in there. So that's great. So now I've got my meat, my inch and a half meat in there that I want. And uh, that's outstanding. So there you go. A little hot tip of the day. Hot tip of the day is you want to move a node. You can actually type in the value and boom. Awesome. All right. So now I don't need that measurement uh, in there. So I can go ahead and get rid of it. But I do need my guidelines. Now, uh-oh, I changed one, but not the other, right? Well, I'm pretty well lazy. I'm going to double click on this one. I'm going to hold down my control key. And I'm going to actually grab it right here in the middle so I can drag it straight across and snap it to the middle there. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. All right. And if I come in just to double check, if I go into node editing mode, that node should be right on that line, that center point. Okay. All right. So I'm all centered up. Now, that's great. Um, now let's go ahead and create our notch. So uh, we're going to be basically going halfway down on uh, from one direction and halfway up on the other so that when these two parts join together, uh, they're going to be flush with one another. So it'll be flush and everything. And uh, so I'm basically going to be creating uh, this shape uh, down three quarters of an inch and... Um, by three quarters of an inch because it's an inch and a half. So I'm going to come down to three quarters. Now, oh man, how do I draw that? How do I snap to that three quarters? Very easily. We're going to go ahead and type in 0. 0.75 comma 0. 0.75 enter. And it's going to create that three quarter by three quarter inch square for me. Right? Very cool. Over here. Might as well jump on this. Uh, we're going to take our rectangle tool and we're going to come in and I'm going to drag this up. And I could freehand it like right there's my 0.75 by 0.75. I could let go right now and draw it. Or I could type in that value. You just put a comma between the width and the height. So value, comma, value, enter. 0.75, comma, 0.75, enter or whatever your value is, your number and all. And so that'll give me my bottom notch there now these two parts when i come in let's get them uh trimmed up first let's go into our trim tool and let's trim open that one up double click the trim to open that one up now i got a little 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 nub sticking out there got a little nub sticking out there oh all right, let me turn my guides off so I can see what I'm doing. And let me close my tools, see if they snap together. They don't. So let's go in that trim tool and let's clean that up. And the reason why it's not cleaning up, you see my rectangle did not because of the arch didn't reach down there, right? And so if I trim this, if I go in and try to trim this, all it's going to do is either delete my part that I'm trimming or it's just not going to trim. So what I need to do is there's two ways I can approach this. One is I can come in and go into node editing mode. I can delete this point here. I could delete that point. But if I delete that point, that change, that, that'll remove that and it'll change my line to up here. And I don't want to do that. So let me show you what that would look like. If I come in here and delete that point, then it got rid of that point and everything and it changed my arc. It's not the same arc anymore. It's a little bit different. So I don't want to do that. What I want to do is I want to come in here and I want to cut the vector right here. I want to come right down directly below. Actually, I actually, no, I, I don't. I'm going to just pull this node out of the way. And I have a choice. I can either drag this node down or I can use my extend tool to extend to that vector. In this case, I'm just going to drag my node straight down to where it overlaps. And then I could very simply come in and trim these two objects away. Okay. 
very easily trim those two objects away. You're supposed to be trimming away there, dude. Jeez Louise. Okay. And now over here, I got the same issue. If I zoom in, I got this little point going on. And so if I go into here and go into node editing mode, I can cut the vector there. Pull this out of the way. It's not that one. Don't pull that one out of the way. Uh, I can pull this one down. <laughs> and uh, then I can grab this node and pull that out of the way. And I can come in with my scissor tool and I can trim those two objects away and clean that up. All right. To create my little notch there. So we've got this notch was very easy. Straight lines. Uh, just a simple trim click over here. We had to do a little bit of cleanup. Uh, to get that right. So there's our two parts. Our, uh, so what should happen is, is when this part comes in and is crossways, you know, right? And this part comes down and sits on that notch, our parts should be flush. Of course, they'd be turned the other way, but I can't show this in three-dimensional in this space, but I can in this space. And, and this is Google SketchUp allows you to kind of visualize your projects by creating 3D objects and things. Uh, so we'd have that simple part there. All right. So very simple plant stand, right? Now you could take this simple design right here. You could change the height. You could change the leg style. You could add some nice 3D decorative carvings on both sides of the legs or one side of the leg, whatever you want to do. You could do some simple V carving, some nice little floral designs. You could cut out shapes. You could do everything just like, you know, this nice little design here and this one over here. You know, you could do all kinds of stuff and you could really just really fancy this up. It doesn't have to be just a plain Jane old plant stand with no, you know, uh, no charisma, if you will, or no character to it. We can add some character. We can do all kinds of nice little designs and everything. Uh, but I'm going to keep this design as a simple plain uh, profile and that's going to be my one plant stand. So we're going to take that and we're going to move that off the board and then we'll come back and look at some of these others. Well, actually, let's not move it off the board. Let's put that on its own layer so that way we can create our tool pass in a little bit. Let me get this uh, centered up here and I believe out of my 24 by 18 I believe if I take these two objects and move them down to there, I should be able to go into my mirror tool and I should be able to create a mirror copy, flip about job center and flip these things vertically. And I can actually bring these down and they're flat feet, right? So I can bring them to my edge. Let me grab this one too. Let's uh, drag that down and snap that to that edge there. Let's drag this up. And this one, hold down the shift key when you're selecting more than one item. Double click on it. And if I pull this up and snap to there, I can get two plant stands out of that one 18 by 24 inch piece. Woohoo! There we go. All right. Okay. So we'll be able to create that profile later. Let's, uh, let's take these objects and let's right click and move them to a new layer and we're going to call this new layer uh very creative plant stand one right or we might call it a six inch clay pot plant stand or whatever you wanted to call it you could call it and i don't need it visible anymore we'll do that and we'll click ok so it'll go away it's still there if i turn on my plant stand one it's still there but i'm making it invisible because i don't need it um, I'm going to delete some of these layers, these empty layers in here and, um, all that stuff. So I can kind of focus on some other designs and things. Now there is a very cool website online called three axis.co. Uh, and on three axis.co, we open up a tab here and I'll give them a shout out. Pretty cool website. So three axis. Co. If we come in here, uh, this is a website with free vectors for laser cutting. 
right? Laser cutting. So there's all kinds of cool little projects in here for laser cutting, but many of these projects can be adapted for CNC cutting. So, you know, we could take some of these projects and download the files and uh, uh, use them for, uh, you know, and alter them so that, that we could cut them on our CNC if we don't have a laser, you know, and things like that. But it's a very cool website <coughs> and um, they got free vectors. Uh, they've got, um, they've got some cool free vectors, uh, and things. They've got, uh, some Corel draw files, which I'm going to talk to you about changing Corel draw files out. They've got some laser cut categories here. Let's see what that is, uh, which pretty much kind of the same thing, laser cut and stuff. That's a pretty cool home sweet home. I do that on a CNC all day long. Um, you know, so it's a neat little site and, you know, you got some, uh, you know, free files. You can actually, um, you can actually sign up, uh, and create an account with them. I don't know them personally. I don't, I don't, you know, I just, uh, you know, happen to, you know, come across their site one day and their vectors are pretty cool. In tonight's class, I'm, uh, showcasing two of the, pro their laser cut projects, uh, for this, this project for plant stand and all. So I wanted to give them a shout out. Now, <clears throat> let's say, <clears throat> excuse me, that we liked this tree, right? And it's a laser cut tree decor. It's a probably a pretty small file, but it's a CDR file. CDR stands for Corel Draw. Now, one of the things is, is when we're importing vectors into the Vectric software, CDR, Corel Draw, is not one of the options, not one of the options. And... If you're like me and do not have Corel Draw, um, all I have is Adobe Illustrator uh, as a vector program. And I don't have Corel Draw, so when I download this file, I can't open the CDR file. Well, there's another cool little website that, if we go into my bookmarks here, um. Let me scroll all the way down. Zamzar file conversion. Zamzar, Z-A-M-Z-A-R, file conversion. Um, let's go down here to convert new files to get to the front page of zamzar.com. Uh, very easily, we can add a file, and then we can convert it to a lot of different file formats. Uh, bitmap, PNG, DXF, EPS. Uh, quite a few, you know, uh, document type files and things like that, uh, image formats and stuff, SVG and all that wonderful stuff. So if I were to uh, come here and let's say I liked that tree and I click on that tree, I can come in here and it's a Corel draw file, CDR file. Uh, do not click the starts and downloads that have the little blue X's. Those are advertisers. Those are advertisements and they are not part of the website. Okay. But if I scroll all the way down past these advertisements, these download and continue buttons really catch you, you know, but if I come down here, there's a download button right here. It says DIY 3D puzzle. Uh, and there's a download button. Now, when I click that, it doesn't download this what it does is it brings me back to the top of the page and it gives me a download button next to the image so i can now click download and <clears throat> it'll go three two one and then it'll start downloading that file now that file is showing an ai type file format because that's all i have is adobe illustrator so it's trying to associate that cdr with my adobe illustrator but it won't open it's not a, a proper file to open in Adobe Illustrator or uh, yeah, in Adobe Illustrator. So what I'm going to do is I've downloaded this and it's uh, the last four digits or three digits W A R O. If I come over to Zanzar here, I can add a file and I'll go into my uh, recent files today and find that uh, W R eight O file there and open that in there. I'll choose my convert to type and I want it as an SVG. That's a good type for me. DXF, SVG, things like that. And I'll click on convert now. And 
it'll go through the converting process. And then I can download that file. So we only get two files per day as a uh, free limit, two files per day. And in order to do that, we would have to, you know, uh, sign up with a plan or create an account or what have you. And uh, so we don't want to take advantage of the two days, uh, you know, two conversions per day uh, limit. So I'm going to go ahead and click no thanks. I haven't set up my account yet. I'm going to do that. I'll do that later. But once it once it's converted, we can then import that SVG file or DXF file or what have you into our design. We'd simply go up to import vectors and we'd come into our SVG file that we've converted and we could open that up and it will take a second to pop in. Oh, that's actually the file there. <laughs> Ah, gotta love it. Let me let me delete. Oh, I need those measurements, but though. Ah, oh, we can redo the measurements. Let me delete that. All right, let's do that again. Let's import my SVG file. And there's my little guy over there. Right? And so it imports it right in. So two cool websites, two cool resources. Uh, again, that's uh, uh, Zamzar, Z-A-M-Z-A-R dot com, uh, file, converter, file converter. You can set up an account, you know. Uh, I haven't even looked at their pricing and stuff to see what the pricing is. Uh, I'm sure they're pretty fair uh, if you, you know, want more of the files. But I, I don't download two, more than two a day. I don't take advantage of it. But uh, let's see here. So $16 a month, which, you know. So sorry about that. Uh, Nine dollars a month. So yeah, there's you know basic pro and business options and all. Very cool. Um, I'll probably end up doing the business one, but there's a nice little uh, website. And then threeaxis.co. These people are amazing. Their contributors uh, provide these these free. Um, project files, uh, vectors, DXFs and all. That's a pretty little love sign right there. There's a lot of cool projects in here. So I want to give them a big shout out. Thanks for doing that for us uh, makers out there. And uh, yeah, threeaxis.co. So threeaxis.co. So give them a, you know, a try uh, and stuff. But if we look at this little guy here, this is a very little, little uh, kind of plant stand that comes in. Let's uh, get that on the board so we can all see it. Um, <clears throat> If I were to look like the diameter, let's say the diameter of this little lid here and stuff, if I go into my size tool, uh, it's roughly about four and an eighth by four and an eighth, right? Just a very small, uh, very small little tabletop thing. Um, and these stand parts, like you saw me create our stand, they're created the same way. You see, we got our notches here, so they fit the same way. But these little notches here, these four notches here are designed to fit into these four notches here and things. Now, before we can do it with a CNC, we've got to make some alterations. Number one, if our router bit comes and cuts out this pocket or this profile cut, however we did it, uh, we're going to have radiuses here. And there's no radiuses here, you know, uh, for that part to fit in and stuff. It's a square part. So we can't fit a square peg in a round hole you know, our, you know, and, and, and our, our radiuses, you know, from that router bit. So we got to give it a place to go. And that's, again, that's our fillet tool. In this case, it's a dog bone fillet. Now dog bone fillets are used when we have two parts that are fitting together, uh, two slotted pieces that are fitting together. And um, the uh, clearance of the bit needs to be able to, um, our bit needs to have a place to go so that our square parts can still fit to one another, you know? So the description, if you read it, these fillets are used for creating clearance in internal corners to allow slotted pieces to fit together. Right. And so in my case, I'd be using, you know, a uh, quarter inch bit, 
uh, if I did that, then my radius would be an eighth of an inch and I would come in and add my fillet. Now that's too big for this small part, right? I'd have to use a 16th inch bit. That's a big fillet and all. And so that means if I use a eighth inch bit, this would be a 16th inch radius. And, you know, I would have my little fillets, create my little fillets there and stuff. But this part's not up to the size that I want it. If we look at our slots, when you do bring images like this in, or when you create your own images, we need these slots to fit the thickness of our material, right? Uh, and so right now, if I look at the size of one of these slots, the size, uh, the width is uh, about 1.0643. So about one and a 16th inch long. But that thickness, that's going to be based on the thickness of our material. Uh, it's only 0.19 inches. You know, it's not very, you know, we'd have to be using some very thin material, right, to uh, uh, work with this as it currently stands. Now, also, some of the things that we have to contend with with using, you know, files that, were, that we did not create ourselves and things is are the placement of these things correct uh so let's take our measurement tool here and i'm going to measure uh vertically first from the center of this slot see my mouse cursor changed when i got in the center of that that center mark from the center here down to the center of this one i have 2.2881 so theoretically from the center of this notch that's going to fit in there or this uh, you know, tenon that's going to fit in there from the center of that. Let's go horizontally this time from the center of this tenon to the center of this tenon. I have 2.2682. So 2.2881 and 2.2682 are not the same number. So I'm going to be off a little bit and if i take my part here if i take my part and i grab it and i'm just gonna grab right up on the center of this notch here i'm gonna grab this and i'm gonna drag it up and snap to the center of that you can see that they undersized the notches to fit in so it's kind of sloppy right it's not a nice little friction fit to lock it together they kind of just they've created this uh the the this gap if you will and my gap just to see how consistent they were if i were to measure horizontally from this point to this point right 0 0.0304 and if i were to measure from this point to this point oh where'd it go where'd you go to from here to here 0 0.0331 034 so it's not drawn really you know they, they made the part so they are you know they fit and it's real sloppy you know it's just that lid just literally sits right on top of those four pegs you know that table that surface that flat that flat round piece and everything but when I put my joints together and all, I want a nice fitting joint. So we got to make some appropriate changes and everything. I want a nice friction fit. You know, I want to be able to snap this thing together and it not fall apart when I pick it up to move it from my coffee table to my dining table or whatever the case may be. You know what I mean? So we got to be mindful that when we're bringing in uh, files and, and stuff, that are not something that we've created that really look at it, examine it. Don't take anything for granted. Don't take it for granted that when you cut this and you put it together, that it's going to be a perfect fit um, because not everything is perfect, right? Uh, we, we got to make some changes to make things perfect. We've got to do some cleanup and stuff. So don't think right out of the gate. Uh, we're going to get there. First things first is the measurements. Let's go back in and measure our vertical distance from here 
to here. This is based on material that is 1.1933 inches thick. So I want to, if I made this, I would most likely make this out of three eighths, half inch, uh, probably even three quarter. I would definitely have to change some things and all, but is there a way that we can scale this design up to make our notches the size they need to be uh, with, with Vetric? Can we, can we select this and, and scale up? Yes, we can. It requires a little bit of math. Okay. So for this, I'm going to break out the calculator here. And we'll throw that off to the side and all. And once again, uh, let's get that number that I deleted like a goofball. 0.1933. So what it requires is that we take uh, the thickness of our material. I'm going to go a half inch on this project. Okay. And uh, I'm going to go a half inch. So I'm going to take my half inch material and I'm going to divide that by that 0 0.1933. 1933. And that's going to give me 2.5866, right? Now, I'm going to move my decimal point over. Uh, so basically, right now, to get up to my half-inch thickness material, I need to go 258.66% of what this current shape is. So that means if I took this object here and I scaled it up. I go into my size tool and I scaled it up using the percent box. And let me get back into full screen so you guys can see everything up close. Instead of using my size in inches, if I use my percent box, if I come in and uh, 258.66, I'll even throw in the five there. If I come in here, Man, I forgot the number that quick. 258.66. So if I come in here and go 258.66, and I'll even throw the five in there, six five percent, and I apply this, it's going to tell me that some objects can't be scaled. Well, what that object is that can't be scaled is my measurement. So we're going to delete that measurement. We don't want it in there. So once again. 255.66, and i got to check that number again. Man, my memory is terrible. 58.66, Lenny, 258.66. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, scale that up. And I should now be able to come in and take a measurement here. And if all was good with the, all was right with the world, I'm going to be pretty darn close to a half inch. Right, I just overshot it by one ten thousandths of an inch. I'm okay with that. Now I could, if I wanted to be a stickler and all, I could come in there and make that two five eight point six five. I could break it down even further. You know, uh, two hundred fifty eight point six six five two percent. You know, whatever the case may be. I mean, I could literally use this whole number to get down to that half inch. If I use that whole number, then uh, you know, I'm probably going to nail a half inch. Let's let's see if that's correct or not. Let's see how well the software is. Let's just experiment because I'm happy with this. I'm good with that, right? I, uh, that's that's close enough for me. But let's uh, undo that and let's undo our scale here. Let's select our object. Let's come into our size tool and let's paste our value. Oh shit. I copied the value, not paste. All right, let's go back to our uh, calendar and grab that again. Copy. And I'm going to hit Control V for paste. I'm going to throw that whole number in there. And I'm going to scale that up. But it won't let me scale up because it's a decimal here. And it needs to be 258 point. You know, 258% point, and this other long number, it's not going to let me use all those decimals. See, it didn't change that bottom number, I can tell. So I'm going to start kind of backing off, or I got to round up. Let me do the math and round up here. So 2.665 would be 2.67. 
Uh, five, two. Let's go stop at the two. Okay. We'll stop at the two and we'll click apply. Scale that up to that. And let's take that measurement again and let's see how well we did. Let's see how well the software does for us by going, you know, really that if we didn't need to go to that extreme, but let's come in here and still right there, right? 5,001. So we're, we're on, I'm happy with that. So what that's done by scaling up the slots to where they fit my material, it's kind of scaled my whole project up and everything. And so now if we look at my little platter here, uh, what's my diameter of my platter? or plate or stand or base, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm about 10 by 10, 10 inch by 10 inch. Now, what if I don't want to, Laney, what if I don't want a 10 inch by 10 inch, you know, plant stand? What if I want this to be six by six? Uh, then all you do is you size this down to six by six and you change these rectangles to meet your needs of your, your stand and everything you don't you, you know i was just showing you the math if we took the size of our material divided by the size of that slot then we get a number here roll that decimal point over uh 258 percent point six six percent we type that in the percent we can get close to what we want and uh you know a 10 inch base that's not bad that'd be a cool little uh it could be like a little cake stand too right a little decorative cake stand or something but we're talking plant stands today and um, a 10 inch plant stand, maybe for my larger pots and all, but I wouldn't want it there. So let's bring it back down. Let's bring it back down to about, se let's go seven inches in diameter and let all the whole thing, right? This whole thing here. I'm going to bring, I'm just the circle here. I'm going to bring that down to seven inches in diameter. Seven. Not able to slip. Okay, my measurement's in there again. It won't scale a measurement, guys, so keep that in mind. It will not scale a measurement. Don't don't try. You'll see what happens with those errors. Let's go with a 7-inch uh, little disc there. And now, if I measure this, of course, changing that and not changing this, you know, brings me, you know, where these two parts don't match anymore, and I've got to alter this one. So I could, I could do some math. So it, currently right now, using that same calculator method, if I'm at uh, roughly 10 and a half inches on this piece here, 10 and three quarters, we'll call it 10 and three quarters, and I want to scale it down. Mm, where's my calculator at? If I want to take 10 and three quarters, 10.75 divided by seven equals, that's roughly 153%. Uh, and so uh, we would take that, um, we got to subtract it from 100, so... 40, 47%, right? Oh, here, let me do it this way. Seven divided by 10 equals 70%. So if I scale this down 70%, did I hit my seven or not? Am I wrong or am I right? Let's see here. Seven and a half. So close enough, right? Uh, that kind of gets me where I want. Seven and a half. So we can scale that way. You know, you can do math. That's what that percentage box is there for. But now, all right, so I've got this scaled down to roughly seven and a half inch diameter. Um, if I want to get down to seven, I could, I could add another, make it 75% instead of 70%. But now my slots, I've got to, I got to focus on these. And so if we look at the size of this, it's only three quarter or uh, three, a little under three eighths of an inch. And I want half inch material uh, and everything. And also I need to take into consideration these little notches right here. So let's measure them first. So my notch horizontally, this notch from here to here is 
0.1 or 1.8056. This one's not going to be the same either because it's not drawn correctly. I've already measured all these. 1.817 1 versus 1.8056. So they're a little off in their measurements. I'm going to clean that up and I'll, uh, I'm going to use this number, 817. We'll, we'll use that number. Uh, and we're going to actually, let's go 1.80. We'll redraw these, both of these, 1.80. So then that means my rectangle here, my notches here, need to be sized 0.5 inches wide by 1.80 long. Okay, and then I need those notches to match that all the way around. Now, if these things are centered, if these things are centered, right? If they are centered, this measurement right here is the center of this, oh, this oval, that little pivot spot there. If these are centered, I should, I can go in, it's very simple to just go in and change all the rest of these to the same 0.18 but I like playing around with tools and stuff. If I use my circular array tool down here and I select that and my rotation center was the spot here. Let me uh, close this tool and let me get my center spot. Let me get my center number. If I open up my rotate tool. That is, let me copy this value, 10.7458 on the X, 15.3043 on the Y. I wrote those down. So if I come in here and grab this bad boy and I go into this circular array tool, I should be able to uh, 10.7. Four, five, eight, by 15.3043. Make that my rotation point. See it pop up there, my rotation point. And I rotate this four times around, four times around, 360 degrees. I should theoretically land in that spot, right? So it's now nice and centered and all. So I didn't have to reinvent the wheel. I didn't have to redraw anything. I can come in here and I can delete my little rectangles, little bad ones. I got my new notches, right, for my material. Yeah. Thanks, Roy. Roy jumped in there, and I didn't see Roy Bartell's uh, comment. He's like, divide seven by 10.75. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you, Roy. It took me a second to get to that one. I had to reverse my thinking, my way of thinking and all. All right. So now I've got this laid out. Let's get it on the board. We're halfway on the board, halfway up. I'm going to hit F9 on my keyboard to center this up and everything uh, so that uh, we can focus on that. All right. So I've got my notches here. Now, one of my key things is, is again, making sure that everything is where it's supposed to be. So the center of this notch to the center of this notch, we've got roughly 4.128. Okay. Center of this notch here to the center of this one. Uh, that's a vertical measurement, not a horizontal line. Let's go from here to here. Roughly, you know, 4.1428. What a wonderful world when everything lays out perfectly. So what we have to make sure is that when we alter this design, number one, that we got to change this. It's got to be a half inch wide for our material. But number two, this center to this center should match that 4.1428. Right. So let's do that. Let's come in here and horizontal measurement from this point to here. Okay. 4.1069. I'm a little off beat. So what I'm going to do instead of reinventing the wheels, I'm going to take a drag. I'm going to close my measurement tool 
and I'm going to drag a guideline. I love guidelines. I'm going to snap to the center of this here. And on my guideline, I'm going to right click and I'm going to create another parallel guide going to the right. That distance, four point, oh, I'm bad with numbers today, 4.1428. So I'm going to right click, create a relative guide, 4.1428, and click create guide. It's going to lay that guide out for me. And now you can see how far off my center is and everything. I've got to change the size of these notches. Remember, we sized them down to 1.80, 1.80 and everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my rectangle tool. I'm going to use my rectangle tool. And uh, my, my notches need to be a width of 1.80. The thickness, I'd like these to be flush with the top of this when it all goes together. So at least a half inch thick, maybe even a little bit thicker so that we can sand flush and really button it up. Maybe a few thousandths of an inch, but still at least at a minimum a half inch tall. So because uh, I'm using half inch material. So I want to create that rectangle. I'm going to snap right to the center of that. And I'm going to snap right to the center of that with that measurement and everything. And now I know that's centered. So I can now come in here and you see, you know, how far off we are and everything. I'm going to go into this object, my original object here. I'm going to go into node editing, node editing. I'm going to cut the vector right here. Cut the vector. Bam. Over here, I'm going to cut the vector. Over here on this one, I'm going to cut the vector. And over here on this, I'm going to cut the vector. Okay. What that allows me to do is get out of node editing mode and zoom back into this part so we can see what we're working with here. I can get rid of these measurements now. I don't need that measurement, that measurement, or that measurement. They're just, oop, they're just in my way. I don't need the guidelines right now. I can turn those off. But what that will allow me to do is take this object and delete it. Take this object and delete it. And now I can come in and I can start laying things out. Now, I don't want, when I bring this down, if I click on this and I grab this corner, to use this corner as my alignment and I bring it down. I don't want to snap to that if it's not right there. I don't want to move over to that point, you know, that little bit, you know, it wasn't quite there. I want to make sure that I hold my alternate key down. When I grab this, if I hold my alternate key down, you're going to see a line come and I don't care, you know, where I move my mouse. I can either go horizontally from that corner or vertically from that corner. I can't willy nilly, you know, go anywhere. It's gonna only let me go left and right on that line or up and down. So I wanna come down and I wanna come down in alignment with this. That gives me that notch there. And I wanna use my extend tool to bring this over to there. Okay, bring that over to here. On the side over here, Got that little opening. I'm going to use my extend tool to bring this from here to here. Okay, to this line. And then all I have to do is come in with my scissor tool and trim that line away. And there is my new notch, right? For this part. So the same thing here. If I come in and double click on this. I'm going to grab right on that corner, not the white boxes, but right on the corner of the line. I'm going to hold down my alternate key and that way it restricts me to that axis. I can either go up and down or left and right on that axis. I can't sit there and move over here. I can only go left and right. So I'm going to come straight down and I'm going to line up with that. <clears throat> Once again, I'm going to use my extend tool, come over and extend to this line. Same thing over here with my extend tool. I'm going to click on this line and this line to extend that over. And then I'm going to use my scissor tool to trim. All right. It's all about using your tools and everything. Now, same thing applies here. Okay. This is half inch material. This is half inch thick material. So my notch here 
needs to be a half inch wide and currently it most likely is or is not we'll find out here in two seconds if i go from here to here we are not we're at three eighths so we've got to widen that up very simply uh i'm just going to take my rectangle tool and i'm going to come from here and just draw a rectangle snap it down and i want to make sure that my rectangle is at least a half inch wide okay and the height is 4.112 look over to your left and also look to the cursor the right of the cursor you see that y-axis is 4.112 that's the height that i'm going down to and my width is going to be a half inch so if i type in my width first 0.5 comma 0.4112 enter it's going to create that rectangle and what my job is is to make sure that the center of that rectangle is the center of that part okay center of that part and everything because we might not be centered right because we just move this notch over here we move this notch but if i center there i may not be centered right i may not be so let's find out let's grab a horizontal measurement from here to here 2.3069 and if i take my guideline love guides i can do math i can create a relative guide to the right 2.3069 divided by 2 hit my equal key to get that where that guide needs to be right that's my center so now I can come in and make sure that my center of my rectangle, and you can see we were off, right? You can see where we're off. We can, you know, bring that center, grab that center point of our rectangle. You can grab that center, just come up here. You'll see your cursor change with that line. We can come up here and snap to that point, and then we can come down and snap to there. And we should be all centered up. Now I can come in with my scissor tool. I can get rid of that rectangle, get rid of this notch here, and I'm all set with that part. Right, 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 right. All right. Now, Laney, are you set? These are the questions you should be asking. Laney, are you actually set when you scaled this up? You didn't measure how thick this part is right here. So that when both pieces go together, they're flush at the top. Are you sure that you're set? Did you did you do that math? Because I didn't see you measure that piece right here to make sure that that depth is the right depth. And you'd be correct asking me that question. <laughs> so let's do that measurement. Uh, let's go up here and measure vertically from this line down to this line. Yeah. Okay. So it's roughly 0.7914. And if I were to take a guideline, if I let's close the measurement tool. If I were to take a guideline from here, snap to there, and right click and move a relative guide. Now I'm going down, so it's a negative number when you're going down, positive is up. So if I make a relative guide, relative guide, 0.7914 divided by two equals, 0.3957, if I put a minus sign in there and create that guide, that'll give me my guide. And you can see that I'm actually not at that center of that part, all right? The center is where that guideline is. So I just gotta go into here, go into node editing, grab these two nodes right there, and I can uh, take this and pull, oh, stop playing around there grab those nodes i can take those three nodes and i can pull them up snap them to that point and very easily recover okay so now this part is perfectly let's turn off those guidelines this part is perfectly laid out 
there's no sense in reinventing the wheel. So the only thing this part I have to do here is on this, I can delete that, double click on this, and I can hold down my control key and drag down a copy. And the only thing that I need to change is this notch needs to be down here, not up here. So if I take a rectangle tool, if I hover my mouse over these corners, it wakes up those corners and it gives me that nice guideline shooting down there. And so if I come here and draw a rectangle, right, like that, and I come in here and grab a line and draw a line like that, I can very easily Take my scissor tool now and trim, trim. I hate when it does that. Quit doing that. And uh, up here at the top, I can trim away that line and that line. I hate when it does that sometimes. Sometimes it leaves some remnants. Uh, and the reason why it leaves remnants is, I don't know. It just does. Uh, let's make sure my line is nice and straight here. Looks like I'm off. And that's what I, why I left remnants. You see that? It's not straight. There's a little bit of a curvature to it, you know? And that should be a straight line. You see there's a little curvature to it. You see kind of it's not on the line there and everything. I don't want that. And that's what happened. That's why when it was trimmed away, it was. that's why when it trimmed, I'm going to undo that trim. All my trim is back to here. OK, when um, let's get rid of the guidelines for a minute. This line, this bottom line is not exactly straight. There's a step down. You can kind of see a little step down right there and over here, too, in this far corner. And also my rectangle has an overlap. And that's why when I trimmed, it was trim, trim, trim. There's always a reason for something. If we just examine it a little bit closer, We'll figure out what that something is. Now, these should be straight lines here. So I'm going to fix that real quick. I'm going to come into node editing on this, right? This, I'm going to, this line, I'm going to right click and turn that into a line instead of an arc. Get a nice straight line here. And I'm going to uh, come in. And bring this line down to here, down to here, you know, because once again, I need that, that measurement, just, you know, everything's got to be, we got to be precise, guys. So uh, if I go vertically from here to here, remember that number was 0.3957. So that should mean from here to here, I should be at 0.3957 and I'm not, so it's a little high. So, or a little, or a little long. So that means my rectangle is a little long. So if I close this tool and grab this rectangle right here, this rectangle right here, I should be able to go into my size tool and change it. 0.3957 it should be, 0.3957. I should be able to change that click apply and then all i have to do is come in and snap it back up to there and i should be nice and flush down here but i'm not I'm not let me make sure i'm let me redo my measurement let me make sure i got it right Make sure we got it right. So from this point here to this point here, 3957. So that means that's correct. So that means this line needs to be brought down. Okay. So very simple. Node edit mode. I'm just going to simply grab all of these nodes here. Sorry, I keep moving in and out. I'm going to grab these nodes right here. And 
I'm going to grab, hold down the shift key and grab this center point. And I'm simply going to scroll in nice and tight. And I'm going to pull this down to there. Okay. Pull that down to there. Now, let's get rid of these measurements and redraw our line. Remember, I undid everything to fix it. So draw our line there and come in with our scissor tool and trim this away. Now, Laney, you just made, oh, we got one more trim, this line right here. Laney, you just made a change in the height of that. You lowered those lines down. Do they match up here now? No, they don't. So little changes, you got to just make sure things are consistent. This is the last change we got to make. I just, all I have to do is measure from here down to here and read that number, 7919. Measure from here down to here, 7914, right? So there's just, this one's a little shorter. All I'm going to do is 7919, 7914. It's a difference of point zero 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 five, right? Point zero 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 five. If I come in here and I go into node editing mode for the last time and I select these lower nodes and I come in and I start pulling them up, right? Start pulling them up. I don't have to pull them up that high. If I just pull them up straight up, Make sure you go straight up. I pull them straight up and type in my value of 0. 0.000, right? 0, 0, 0, 0, and hit enter. It's going to shift that up at 0. 0.005 inches. And if I come in and delete that measurement and measure it one more time just for sakes and giggles and all. Oh, 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 rough, rough. What I do? Point zero 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 five. Let me let me make sure. Let me do. Let me undo that. Let me undo my 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 note edit here. Let me measure again. Was I off with my point zero 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 five? Point zero zero. Zero five is the difference between those two numbers, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, let me measure that again. Daggummit. Vetric, work with me, man. All right, let me go from here to here again. Make sure I'm at... Oh, yeah. I'm right. What the hell was I measuring? Okay. I I knew Vetric wouldn't let me down. So, um, the... Now we have two identical parts and everything... Uh, we should, if everything is all copacetic and everything, right? If everything is all good with our parts and everything is nice and centered, we should be able to finalize this by coming in here one last time and from center to center horizontally, from center to center horizontally and center to center horizontally, our numbers should match 4.1069. 4 they do. And if we come in here and get rid of these numbers, let's make sure we don't screw up. Do I need to move? I might have to move my notches over. Hold on a second. Let's measure. Center to center. Okay, point. point. 4.1428, that was our magic number we're shooting for, and we're a little off. So these notches need to be slid 4.1428. Let me write that down. I'm, I'm terrible with numbers tonight for some reason. Uh, 4.1428. Okay, that's our distance, and it's the both directions. We know that because I just deleted those numbers a minute ago. So that's our that's our magic number there and everything. So that means from the center to these, you know, from center to center, we should be at 4.1428. 4, 4 and that one is 4.1069. I'm going to use my calculator this time. Not my calculator, my calculator in the software. And 
see what in the world uh, I need to do because they need to be spread out. They need to be spread out. How much in each direction do they need to be spread out? So I am going to use my calculator just for right now. You guys are like, man, I didn't know this was a math class, Laney. I thought we were designing. Uh, let's see here. 4.1428 minus 4.1069 equals. What did I do there? You son of a gun. Don't come on now. We're trying to teach a class. 1428 minus 4.1. 069 equals okay so that's my magic number right there but it's not that's the total distance it needs to move but i got to split it in half because this one's got to move a little bit and that one's got to move a little bit so divided by two equals that's my magic number all right let's copy that okay so let's move these things over we're going to come over and go into note editing mode we're going to come into node editing mode. We're going to select these four nodes right here. We're going to drag them over. We're going to stop and pause, and we're going to type in our magic number, which, oh, I wish I would have uh, written that down instead of copy here. Let me, let me undo that. Control-Z. Let me write it down because copy is not working for me on this second. Uh, point. Zero one seven nine five. Okay, let's do that again. Let's come in here and select these four nodes, grab this bottom one and drag it over, stop and type in point zero one seven nine five and hit enter. Wonderful. Come over here and grab these four nodes, grab this one, it doesn't matter which one you grab, we'll grab this one and drag it over. And again, type in point oh one seven nine five and hit enter. Shift that one over a little bit. We'll do the same thing down here. Grab these four nodes. Shift this this way. Point zero one seven nine five. Enter. Grab these four. Drag it over, 0 0.01795, enter. And by doing that, we should be able to validate that measurement from center to center being 4.1428, our magic number that we needed to hit here, from here to here. Okay, 4.1428. So we're golden. Now this part's going to fit together. Almost. All right. These parts here, up here, these slots, these notches, are when our router comes and cuts this out and everything, when it comes and does the inside corners for our notched pieces here, took a long while to get there, right? But we have to... We have to learn how to get to these things. And that was a, that was a long way around, right? It, but you've got to learn that you can do these types of things in here. So hopefully you're with me and you understand. You're like, man, that's cool to know that I can do that if I ever needed to do that, right? But can't fit a square peg in a round hole. When my router bit comes in, my eighth inch or quarter inch router bit, whatever I'm using, when it comes in to cut the part and everything, when it comes and cuts this part out and all, it's not going to be able to get to that corner. So I'm going to have a radius there on these inside corners. I'm going to have this radius, you know, and on these inside corners here, I'm going to have a radius. So we've got to add our fillets. So our router bit has a place to go. We can decide what bit we're going to use to cut out. And in this case, I think I'm going to uh, probably, you know, so I can kind of somewhat get my little edges and everything here, nice and clean. I'm going to use an uh, eighth inch end mill. Uh, and I have an eighth inch end mill that has a one and three thirty seconds inch cut depth. So uh, I can use that. If I were using a quarter inch end mill, that'd be fine. I just need to know that when it goes to cut out this profile, right? 
I'm not going to get those sharp corners. Also, I'll probably end up, you know, losing those if I use my quarter inch. But let's say we were using the quarter inch. Let's let's stick with that. I'm going to come in here to my fillet tool and I'm going to use a dog bone fillet. Slotted pieces that fit together. This piece fits in this piece type of thing. I need on my outside corner, if I'm using a quarter inch end mill, that's an eighth inch radius for the tool. I need to come in here and put in my eighth inch radius on these corners. Okay, that gives my bit a place to go. And then I still have this nice flat edge here, 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 and here that my piece can fit right into and all. So I need to add my fillets here. Okay, this is if I'm using a quarter inch. If you don't want these fillets so big, use an eighth inch end mill, a smaller end mill, and you can reduce the size of those fillets dramatically. But over here, same thing. When that router bit's cutting, this is a jointed piece. This is my tenon. When it's fitting in there, you know, that's going to create a radius there. and My parts won't fit together or sit flush. So I need to put that fillet there, you know, for those parts and everything, those inside parts. Okay. That even includes these notches. When this part comes in to fit into here, you know, I need to create my fillets. Okay. My fillets. Notice there's a line hiding back there on that one. Uh, let's go ahead and close this and let's click on that line right there and delete it. That was hiding from earlier. But I got to create those fillets. Oops. I got this one I got to do. These inside corners. So that router bit has a place to go, but then I have this, still have this nice 90 degree quarter inch. And so when my part, let me draw a rectangle here. When my part goes to fit in, and everything. Let's get it to fit properly. Okay. It, it gives a place for my corners to go. You know, I don't have a radius there, so i got a place for my corners to go, and uh, my part can fit in there. You know what I mean? And that's not where the part fits, but you get the idea. So this can fit up into those, and we get a nice sit flush and all. So you got to remember when you have slotted pieces fitting together, you've got to create that radius. Now, personally, I'm going to hold down my control Z key to get rid of every one of those radiuses that I just created all the way around those parts. Because personally, I think I'm going to use an eighth inch end mill to cut this and uh, that'll make my radius a sixteenth of an inch instead of a, uh, an eighth. Um, I think it would just look a little nicer. So I'm just going to come in here and on my, see, nice, small. So they'll be very rare, very, not very visible. 16th inch radius for that eighth inch end mill. So we can drop those in there. And that would be more appropriate for a project this size. All right, let me create these last one, two, three, four four, five, six, one, two, outside, outside, five, six. And now I've got my parts for this piece. Now, this piece, if I come over here, hold down my control key and drag this. I'm going to hit the G key, the G key for group. The G key is the group key. So I'm going to select these and group these together for the moment because I do believe that if I play my cards right and everything, if I play my cards right, I do believe if I hold down my control key one more time, And drop that roughly there. Ungroup that. The U key for ungroup or the ungroup button is over here. If I take these two pieces and bring them down. There's that other line. I knew there was a line, wasn't there? Uh, bring them down. I can, you know, spread these out to minimize my waist and all that. But if I do, so 
this is the wonderful thing about, you know, I, I just manually move these parts around, right, to kind of try to minimize my waste. But in the VCAR Pro and Aspire software, we have a nesting tool. Now, desktop got users, you guys would have to move your parts around and, you know, get them laid out just right and stuff. But if I came in here, if I came in here and uh, let me get rid of that. There's another line right there. Ungroup. Those lines are from earlier. Okay. If I came in here and let me make sure. Yeah. Ungroup. Select that line. Bet you I have one down here on this one too. Do I have one? No, I deleted that one already. Okay. If I come here and I select my object, let's turn off the uh, ruler key. If I, if I select this object here, group it together. G for group. Select this object here. Group it together. G for group. This object here, G for group. These parts, I can leave ungrouped, okay? If I select all of these objects here and I nest them on my board, uh, I'm gonna use a eighth inch diameter tool to cut them out. I want a, let's go three eighths of an inch Three, seven, five, three eighths of an inch clearance. Now the clearance is the distance from the, where the router bit's cutting the edge of the one material, that space gap between the other piece. I want my eighth inch bit, eighth inch and eighth inch uh, is a quarter and I want an eighth inch gap in the middle, which is three eighths. I want a nice little, leave a nice little uh, divider line there. And my border gap, how far I want to be away from the edge, it kind of depends on where my clamps and stuff are and everything. I'll go with a half inch border gap. And I can let the parts rotate up to 90 degrees and stuff. So if I preview this and everything, it'll nest the parts in a way to minimize my waste and maximize the yield. Now I've got plenty of room over here. I could, I could do some more stuff, you know, so it'll nest those parts together for me uh, to cut out. And so I can do three of these particular type of stands out of this 18 by 24 inch board, you know, you know, you know. All right. So we will uh, make sure that these are on their own layer. We'll right click and move to a new layer. We're going to call this layer very creatively plant and two. We'll turn off the visibility and hide that. And that takes us to this very cool decorative design one here. Now, this one's a bigger one. <clears throat> you know, this one's about 24 inches tall. Uh, let me see here. Let's get the measurements. This one here is, yeah, 24 inches, about 24 and 5 eighths inches tall uh, on these legs and stuff. Now, this is a pretty cool design. I, I don't, the hearts and all, uh, I'm going to ungroup this, U for ungroup, but again, your ungroup key is right here under edit objects, the fifth icon on the first row. But on this, I would probably change this up a bit. I'm not a fan of the hearts. Uh, you know, or the teardrops and stuff in here, I'd probably create some other kind of uh, shape or something, or maybe do some nice decorative 3D model cutting in here and stuff. Um, and when these parts, uh, again, came from 3axis.co, uh, 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 it's a laser cut stand, so it's designed for very thin material. So if I were to measure my notches here, if I were to measure not size, measure my notches here. They're a little under three eighths inch thick, you know, uh, 0.32 instead of 0.37. So they're not really appropriately sized for anything that I'd want to do. I, again, I'd probably want to make this stand out of um, uh, three eighths inch uh, material, half inch material, Maybe even three quarter. I might want it to be more robust to hold a heavier plant stand or something uh, because this one has a shelf. It has a top and a shelf. And um, currently our size of this is uh, roughly nine and a half inches in diameter. Okay. Uh, so nine and a half inches in diameter. And I wish I had drawn, had a chance to draw this up in 3D. This is a really pretty piece when it's uh, uh, 
uh, put together uh, and everything. Um, essentially here, let's do this. Let's get rid of this little piece right here and let's take, I want to keep those notches up at the top. Uh, let's take these two pieces right here and let's move that like that. We're going to use our imagination a bit. We're going to take this object here. Of course, I can grab these two vectors. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, let's grab that like that. Uh, let's grab one at a time here. Let's turn off our guidelines. Let's grab one at a time and group it together so that little eye doesn't get lost. I do like that little loop up there at the top. Group that together. Now on this one here, I'm simply going to mirror it. I'm not going to make a mirror copy. I'm not going to flip it about job center. I'm just going to flip it horizontally, right? And uh, that way I can come in here. And we're going to take our uh, little uh, rectangle and we're going to draw a nine inch Nine and a half. Almost got it right, but there. Nine point uh, five. Click apply, and let's come in here and pull that back to there. Pull that back to there. Let's take this object here, double click on it, put it in transform mode, hold down the control key, and I'm gonna grab it right on the corner here, and I'm gonna drag down. Now I can let go of the control key now that I have my copy and everything, but I'm gonna come in here and snap this into place, and imagine four legs all the way around. Um, you know, we'd have a third leg roughly. You know, here all the way around, it'd be a four-legged kind of piece. Really a decorative little plant stand. I'd probably, I'll probably do my own custom little V-carve design in here, and I'll create something, you know, cute, see for you guys. Now, the hearts it had in there, little hearts, those were cut through all the way through. They're nice, too, but, uh, you know, I, I like to kind of change it up a little bit. But the legs, I like the way the legs uh, sprawl out uh, and everything uh, and sit on the floor. I probably will change uh, versus a rounded leg. I might flatten it off, you know, where it's flat with the table and all. But it's a nice little stand. The only thing is, is the notches are not the size of the material I want to use. So they need to be changed. And the thing about that is, is I can't sit there and do the math. Oops, I can't sit there and do the math and uh, scale it up based on that because they're already 24 inches tall. If I scale this up to half inch, and that's going to make this thing over, you know, 36 inches tall. And I want to keep my height and stuff. So all that means is, is that I literally have to go into node editing mode and cut the vector, cut the vector here and here on this notch. And I got to take this guy, this vector and go into my size tool. And I'm just going to unlink the XY. I don't want to change the width. I'm just going to change the height, how thick it is, because my material is half inch thick. And I'm going to change that to 0.5. Click apply to widen that out. And then I need to come in and trim these little overhangs away. And I got to do that with all, you know, each notch, all two notches on each piece. And the same thing with the circle here. I've got to change the width of those notches and stuff, you know, so it's, it's completely different. It's completely different than the way we had to do the last project or even the project before that. There's three different styles, three different ways of changing things and three different things that were three different approaches that we have to do. Uh, so the only thing on this one, we just have to cut these notches loose, widen them up and then reattach them and, you know, make sure that they reattach in a nice looking place or what have you. I try to keep them center. So basically, once again, if I was doing the top one, I would come in and cut the vector on that corner, cut the vector there. On this part that's selected, I'd come into my size tool again, change it to 0.5. I would caliper my parts, you know, make sure they are 0.5, you know, they could be 0.4937. I want my notches to be, I want a pretty nice fit, fit, you know, uh, and stuff. 
but I would wind them up. Now on this one, because of the arch, that line does not extend to there. So our extend tool will help us out, get our line to where it needs to go. And that way we can come in and trim away. Whoops, that line didn't extend either. So let's extend that. Not the fillet tool, Laney, the extend tool, the extend tool, second icon, third row um, <clears throat> of the edit objects menu. Now that I've got those lines extended, I can sit there and just trim away my overhang. And so that one's done. Now, all four of these parts are exactly the same. Why, why reinvent the wheel? Why, why, if, why draw what you can copy, right? Why, why waste time sitting there trimming and scaling and snipping and doing all that? All we had to do was the one, okay? All we had to do was the one, and all I have to do with this, and I'm going to group this together, is I can hold down my control key and drag off one, two, three, four copies, and I have my four legs, right? Right. Same thing with these circles. Both of these circles are identical, you know, and uh, so when we change one, and here's a, all right, let's do this one. So cut the vector here, cut the vector here, okay? Now this notch isn't as wide or as deep as this one because basically it's just fitting it in to where there's a nice, uh, just a small amount of overlap. It doesn't have to be halfway and halfway like our other part and everything. So I'm going to keep this width or this uh, length. Uh, but once again, I'm going to size this up to a half an inch because that's the size of material that I'm going to be using. And now that I have that half an inch, I'm going to take that object and, you know, the center of my object, uh, the center of my circle here, is this point right there okay and so if i come into my move tool or not my move tool sorry my rotate tool uh that here's my measurements once again and again it's just you know messing around i could just i could have probably by the time i wrote down these numbers i could have trimmed the other and had them done it all depends on what's easy for you but 7.5903 by 11.6164. And if I take that object there, go into my rotate offset circular copy tool. And, you know, while I'm here, you know, I could, if I click and, you know, click into that center, it's not going to let me, right? I wish I could just, if I held down my shift key, I wish I could just click in there and it would, I could find the center where I want. But in this case, I just, you know, write it down. So, 7.5903 by 11.6164. So it actually threw it already in there. Uh, I can go ahead and copy that around four times. And then I can join that together. All I have to do to join that together is my trim tool. Just trim. Trim. Oh. I got a little overhang. I got a little overhang on this one. Trim. I got a little overhang down there. I probably got one on the top too. If I got overhang on this side, I probably got overhang on the top. Yep. Be mindful of those things, those little things that don't, your vector won't close up. You'll get a warning saying, hey, we have open vectors and stuff. Let's come in here and let's trim the inside away and trim. Trim. And then back over here. We can trim, trim, and once again, we got that little overhang there. So that circle's all done, which means delete, select, double click on it, hold down the control key, drag her down, right? Why draw what you can copy, okay? So very easily, we're able to recreate that part. So that fits together with half inch thick material. If it was three quarters, you'd make it a three quarter inch notch. If it was three eighths, whatever and all and, and everything. Uh, now on this one, if I go to nest these, this part, 
on this 18 by 24 inch piece. Um, if I go to nest this using my param parameters here that I used on the last piece, if I click preview, my four legs can get cut out of one sheet and my two circles out of another. So I got a little bit of area over here that if I got projects, you know, in the weight that need to be cut out and they're going to be cut out of the same material, I'm going to drop, drag and drop or copy and paste these projects into there. And while I'm cutting, might as well cut them out too, you know, uh, and things. Um, <clears throat> uh, but, you know, why minimize your weight? Oops. Let me do that again. Always click OK. So preview and then click OK. So now we have two sheets. Now, when we're in the nesting tool down at the bottom, active sheet one, sheet one, that's the one that's active. I'd create my tool pass for sheet one. Uh, then come over here and sheet two, it switches the sheets out. So my legs and I'd create the tool pass for them. We're not ready for tool pass right now because we still got to put our fillets in. But um, <clears throat> that's how you switch from your, you know, these grayed out sheets. It's like, how do I get to these sheets? It's you open that nesting tool back up and your active sheet, you just choose which sheet, you know? So in this case, once again, I got to go and put my fillets in my fillet tool using that eighth inch. I'll still use that eighth inch and I'm just going to start knocking my fillets out. on all those corners. That one's done. That one's done. One more. And then switch, close that tool, go into my nesting tool, switch to sheet two. Close it out. Go back into my fillet tool and come in here and drop my fillets in. Now they notice they won't, won't put in there because they're grouped together. They're grouped together. So we got to select our objects, ungroup, 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 ungroup. And then I can add my fillets. Okay. And I could just copy and paste that up four more times and all, but whack, while I'm here, it's just as easy to click and click, click and click. So that check mark will pop up when you get on your corner and stuff. Um, and I got two more up here. Don't miss a fillet accidentally, you know, and you get that part and you're like, oh man, I missed one. But all right. So with that, I can come back in and um, create my tool path. So on this, in this case, let's go over and create a tool path. We haven't created any tool paths right now. Um, Oh, let's stop here before we create tool pass and answer a couple of questions. Um, William Edlin, first question said, uh, would the fillet not be a 16th instead of an eighth? Would the fillet not be a 16th instead of an eighth? So my fillet has a radius of a 16th because I'm using an eighth inch bit, William. So the radius of an eighth inch bit is a 16th. So my radius, my tool radius is a 16th of an inch. Okay, I'm using an eighth inch end mill to cut the part out. All right, tabs, gotta add tabs. We haven't done the tool pass yet, so tabs get added during the tool path. Uh, and then Jeff says, Laney, when you extend the line, does it then close the vector? And that's a very, very good question because no, the answer is no, it does not. So an example being, if I draw a rectangle here and I go into node editing, the N key on your keyboard, the letter N for node is uh, the node editing tool. But let's say I pull this back here. So I've got this open vector and I want to extend it. When I come in here and extend from here to here to recreate that corner, it looks closed. When I select it, the whole thing turns pink, which kind of is an indication that it's closed. And the uh, 
matter is, truth of the matter is, is we have one open object. When we click join, we'll have one closed. Okay. So you have to join it to close it. You got to use your join tool. All right. So extending the line over and everything doesn't necessarily mean that it's closed. And to confirm that, if we go back into our nesting and everything, and let's make sure if we go back into sheet one here, I got my circles, right? Remember, I just extended all those lines and everything and stuff. And let's come in here and turn off a, we got a black outline here. Oh, that's, never mind, that's from my nesting tool. Um, <clears throat> if I come in and I select this object, and I come into my join tool, I have closed objects. So when I, when I trimmed, even though I had to extend the line, when I trimmed those little overhangs, the trim tool, the scissor tool automatically rejoined them and closed them up. But my fillet tool or my extend tool did not. Uh, it was when I trimmed the little overhangs off the corners that it closed them up. So be mindful of that. But these are closed and everything. So good questions. Good, good questions. Um, so what might be wrong? What might be wrong if it will not let you close the object? Okay, good question. So on my rectangle here, if I come in the node editing and cut that vector, okay. Now, right now, that's an open vector. It's been cut right here in the corner. Even though it doesn't look like it's been cut, that is one open vector. So if I come in here to this tool, it will allow me to close it. I have one open. After joining, I'll close. But if my gap was too wide, and I'll even leave that one down. If my gap was too wide for my, um, let's go in here, for my tolerance, I've got one open, one open. and won't let it close. The gap is too long, too big. Now, I could change the tolerance, but here's the problem. It distorts the image. So if I change my tolerance, let's say to... A uh, sixteenth of an inch. I have too many decimal points in there. I do. Um, sixteenth of an inch still, you know, it's, it's wider than that. So let's go uh, eighth of an inch. Okay, still won't let me close. Let's go a quarter of an inch. Still too wide open. Okay, let's go to half an inch. Nope. So one inch, still won't, it must be wider than one inch, 1.5, two, there we go, not 12, well 12 definitely does, let's go two, all right, two, two will let me join, but here's the problem, watch this leg right here, boom, my square is no longer square, it just closed it by bringing that line over, right, that's not what I want. I want my tolerance in my join tool to be, you know, 0 0.001. And if it doesn't let me close the object, then I need to find an alternative. In this case, the alternative would be join with a straight line where it shoots the line over and joins it and closes it. Okay. So we have our join with a curve, join by bringing the two endpoints together, but the join tool just won't work. If it won't let you join, the gap is too wide for your tolerance. But if you change your tolerance, understand that it's going to alter the shape. So look for alternatives. If the join with a straight line tool wasn't available to me, then my extend tool would allow me to extend from there to there. Now I've closed that gap. Now I can come into here and I can join and close that vector, right? So there's alternate tools, alternate things that we can do, alternate approaches to get to it. But if it doesn't let you close it, it's because the gap is too big. Okay, so hopefully that answered your question, Jeff, and hopefully that helped some other people out, too. Those were great questions. All right, so 
Now, let's go back to our nesting tool and let's go back to sheet zero here. And let's get rid of uh, these extra parts up here. All right. So now we've got three very cool decorative plant stands. Stand one. Stand two. And then ultimately stand three. The, it takes two sheets. It's a little bit bigger one. Uh, we can add our own custom elements to it. But imagine... So I like, so this shape, these shapes are nice. So the legs, I like the sprawl at the end, right? You could draw your own design. We talked about drawing vectors last week and all creating your own unique design. It's nice when there's sites out there like threeaxis.co and all that help us and make cnc.com and, and things like that, where we can get files and stuff from uh, make cnc you know, buy, but there's still some great projects on there to work with and stuff. But you can add some custom elements to this. We could add a nice little uh, decorative cutout or cut through. We could do a nice V carve. Uh, if I could, you know, I could widen this up some and maybe, maybe throw a nice little floral model pattern in there. Or, uh, you know, on this, I could do a, let's see here. We could do a very cool, Let's see. Let's do, let's take this one piece here. Move that down here for a minute. And uh, let's take our line tool. And Let's draw a line here. Spacebar. And I can think of a good way to do this. Offset inward. Uh, let's go a eighth inch apart. Uh, let's go a quarter inch apart. Quarter inch apart. Uh, bear with me. This will make sense in a second. Let's. I don't know what my line spacing is now. Hold on a second. I got to measure my line spacing. Uh, let's see. That would be a length measurement from here to there. 0. 0.4806. That's fine. So if I select that offset outward 0. 0.4806. All right, let's take and select all of these and all of these. Oh, let's see here. 
hold down the shift key and turn off that measurement right there. Let's rotate that ever so slightly. So if I take that and then control, let's group that together. Control C, Control V. That's copy and paste. If I take this and rotate this like that, create that little diamond pattern in there. If I take those two objects and group them together as one, and I come in here and select my other object, my outline right here, and I selected it last, I could trim, clear, the last object is the boundary, and that's that profile. I could trim by clearing outside of that boundary to get rid of that, to create this little crosshatch pattern and everything in here. I could take uh, and... I don't want to go right up to the edges. So I'd actually, let's do this. Let's offset this outside pattern just for a moment. We're going to create sharp corners where sharp corners are, but let's offset it inward, inward, uh, 16th, uh, let's go a 32nd, 03125. Uh, let's go a 16th, 0625, inward. And if I select these objects again, all right, turn this one off, turn that off, turn that off. If I select this object last, that's my boundary, and I can clear, once again, trim, clearing outside of the boundary. Oh, it would help if you have your object selected. <coughs> I turned off the wrong objects. All right, hold your shift key down, select that last object and trim, clear that. And then I can, you know, delete that object there. Uh, and that creates a little offset, you know, around my edge and stuff, a little pattern. Um, I could come in and once again with this, I could offset this outward a sixteenth of an inch and then select these few lines right here and if I let's see that line I don't need this line selected because it's not touching anything uh, or this line selected or that line selected or that line selected but in this one all those intersect in some way or another so with those selected, if I select that outside boundary last, I could trim it again, clearing outside of that, or inside this time, clear inside of that boundary away. It'll get rid of that, and then I can get rid of that offset. And that just gives me that little clearing all the way around. And I can use this pattern to either do a V-carve crosshatch type pattern, or, or, Or let me uh, take this object and this object and group it together. G for group. Come in here and let's get it on the board so we can at least see what it looks like. I could come in and on that pattern. Turn off my boundary. On that pattern, I could do a textured tool path. Uh, use an eighth inch ball nose bit. I will start at zero uh, depth at the top of my board, cutting down. We'll go a maximum distance of, oh, I don't know. Uh, we'll go a maximum distance of a eighth of an inch. Maximum cut lines will go one inch. Actually, no, I'm sorry. We'll use the selected vector pattern. Sorry, use the pattern. So the maximum cut will be an eighth of an inch. Uh, I can calculate that and I can create this kind of textured cut with a ball nose or I could do it with a V bit or what have you. 
Uh, we could do the profile cut. And I could have done that also. I could have created some different waves and distortions in line by using this tool. The vector texture tool creates a pattern, a line pattern, right? I could have used that tool instead of drawing the crosshatch. Uh, let's grab this and let's do a profile cut to cut it out. Profile cut, cutting three or a half inch thick material, which I got to change my job size, by the way, because I got it three quarter, remember? Let's change that. Setup, material setup. Let's change that to a half inch and click OK. All right, so profile cut. Cutting a half inch through the material using an eighth inch end mill, which everything was kind of based off of. Um, eighth inch end mill. Cutting on the outside of the line. We would add tabs. So uh, I'm not going to add tabs. To, well, let's add tabs. We'll add tabs. Uh, we're going to add uh, tabs to toolpath. Uh, we're going to click on edit tabs and we'll throw a tab in here. Here, here, and there. That's good enough. Uh, good measure. We'll throw one in there. And calculate that. Cut that part out. Put that texture in it. Make sure my texture is not changed. Okay. And I could create, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but I could create all kinds of little things. I could create, you know, 3D models running up that leg. I could create, uh, you know, a V-carve design. I could create all kinds of patterns and stuff. That was just a real quick, stupid little pattern, uh, you know, what have you. Um, you know, I probably wouldn't do a cross hatch on that, but still, uh, with the ball nose, let's see what that would look like as a profile cut with a V bit. Let's see if that would look any better. So profile cut, uh, cutting an eighth inch deep with a 60 degree V bit. on the line calculate that out reset the preview and preview that toolpath both of those oh shoot I deleted the part because it's got tabs. Um, but, uh, you know, little V-carve. Let's change my quality here. Let's turn that up a bit. And uh, preview that. So we get a little cleaner image. But anyway, crosshatch is not the right image for this design. But we could, you know... Create all kinds of unique stuff. Uh, one or two sided. It could be both sides or one side. But uh, very easy to, to kind of do or, or manipulate. So you can change it. You can add little hearts in there. You can add little stars. You can add whatever you want uh, to decorate this. You can change the shape completely uh, and draw your own shape. You know, you don't have to use what's out there and stuff. So anyhow, um the uh you know we'll go from there now when i was creating that offset that crosshatch pattern uh galusa says um hey how do you keep adding lines repeatedly uh that is the offset tool so if i have a line okay and i am offsetting that line using my offset tool 
I'm going to either offset inward or outward. Now I drew that line from left to right. So on the top going up is inward, going down is outward. Uh, so if I was going inward, that would be going up. And let's say I was going, you know, a quarter inch apart. I want to select the select new. So every time I click the offset button, it selects the new one. So I can just keep clicking the offset button to keep repeating that offset over and over and over and over and over again. Okay. So make sure you have select new. And every time it creates a new one, it selects it. And then you're offsetting that one a quarter, offsetting that a quarter on and on and on. Okay. Control Z to undo or just simply select it and delete it. So that's how you would do that, uh, uh, Calusa. Um, let's see here. All right. So now we've got three pretty cool styles. Now I'm going to come up with something, a nice decorative pattern. Uh, we're going to have a plain style and we're going to have a pattern style. Uh, for you guys, I'm going to create a pattern before I put these files. The files for these projects will be up with the tool pass and everything will be up in the uh, video description uh, for download. You can download. Uh, the projects are created in VCAR Pro 10, uh, VCAR Desktop Pro and Aspire 10 can, uh, you know, or later can open that. For you guys and girls that do not have 10 and you have older versions, I will have the vector files i'll have the vector files uh in there you can download and you can just import them into your software and cr create the tool pass and stuff for you uh for for them and all but you'll still have the vector files. so you'll still have access to be oh i'm sorry i got the hiccups you'll still have access to be able to use the files um and all but i'm gonna do something decorative and i might come up with a different leg pattern as well for you i'm gonna come up with uh we've got three different designs uh, three different little plant stands, a nice, simple little low profile plant stand, um, a, uh, oh, let's go in our nesting tool and go back to board zero there. we got a nice little low profile, another nice little low profile plant stand. I could extend the legs out if I wanted this to be a little taller and all. And by the way, Lainey, how tall is that? Uh, if you don't mind measuring and telling us, uh, sure. Uh, if we were to measure from the floor to where the top, uh, it's a vertical dimension, uh, from the floor to the top, uh, roughly about, you know, one and a half inches tall. And then you've got, uh, yeah, one and a half inches tall. So I'd probably end up scaling these legs up, make it a little bit taller stand, but it's kind of a low, very low profile sit on your dining room table type centerpiece thing. You know, that's what that one is. Uh, from there, We've got uh, our regular, just standard plant stand um, tool. And this one has two that we could knock out. And then we have um, plant stand number three, which is this decorative one, two shelf, dual shelf, 24 inch tall, nine inch diameter plant stand and everything uh, to play up for you guys and girls to play around with. Um, and, uh, uh, you're there now. Nick R Rick Nolan uh, asked a question. Rick says, uh, "Is there a shortcut for commands?" All right, Rick, help me out with that, buddy. Uh, what commands? So, what command do you want to do? Because there's keyboard shortcuts for everything. If we go into the help menu, we can open up the keyboard shortcut uh, document. And uh, there are keyboard shortcuts for all kinds of commands and operations and things. But the word, the way you use the term commands, help me out with that. What do you specifically mean? Which commands uh, or, you know, which, uh, you know, which one? Because there is a shortcut for different things. But what do you mean by commands? And clear that up for me and I'd be happy to answer, come back and answer that. But there are keyboard shortcuts for different types of operations and things that we can do and all. So it's a wonderful little cheat sheet. Now also, you know, when you're, when you are um, in your Vetric software and you've got a tool open, you can click on the get help on this in version 10. It'll open your, uh, you up to your manual to that page of that tool. 
And as you scroll down, it will show you the keyboard shortcuts for that tool. And this is the keyboard shortcut I was using today. Entering a value for the width with a comma, value for the height, and then hitting enter. You know, you can actually, you know, even do uh, side length, enter, uh, comma, enter to create a rectangle with a specific width or height. Uh, like if it's going to be a square, you know, um, you can do uh, radiuses. So like if I was, if I wanted to type in and command, you know, my radius, uh, which is the letter R, you always do radiuses first in the software. What that means is if I were drawing a rectangle, um, do, 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 if I were drawing a rectangle and I come in and draw, I do my radius first. So if I say 0.25 R, You'll see that R.25 pop up at the bottom right. Uh, and then uh, followed by a comma. We got, uh, let's say, 2, comma, 4, enter. Okay. Did I do that right? Oh, don't mean. Did I? I didn't do that right. Hold on a second. Uh, 0.25 R is, is my keyboard not working? 0.25 Okay, let's try that again. 0.25 R, that's my radius. Always do your radiuses first. Um, and then uh, let's go 4 comma 4 enter. There we go. 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 And so basically what had happened, what had happened is after typing in the, uh, you know, the radius, one corner, a corner radius of 0.1 with a width of the rectangle dragging the height. Um, I, uh, I didn't, um, I, my inner key didn't hit and I just started typing the, the other numbers and all. And it just, it was keep, it kept going and everything. So once again, if I were drawing a rectangle and I say 0.5 R that's my radius. And then four is going to be how high I, my width comma six enter. That'll create my four by six with my half inch radiuses. So those are keyboard shortcuts. But now Rick Nolan says, All right, is there a shortcut for commands on the keyboard? Now, the command, all right, hold on. Are you a Mac user talking about the command key, which is the control key? Um, or is there a sh on the keyboard? Yeah, there's a ton of keyboard shortcuts for all kinds of commands. So I'm trying to figure out what the command is that you're trying to ask about, Rick. And I'd help you out with that because unless unless I'm misunderstanding the term commands. Because, uh, yes, your keyboard shortcuts, uh, there's there's tons of them and all of them, all the keyboard shortcuts do one command or the other as far as creating a radius or the length of the width or the control or paste or undo or redo. Those are all commands. That's how I define commands. What are you defining as a command? Be spell it out uh, for me. Uh, act like I'm an idiot because I, I sound like one right now. Uh, and uh, let me know what you mean by the term commands. Uh, and for Mac users, the command key for us is uh, the Windows user is the control key. I don't know if that's what you mean uh, as well. All right, guys and girls, let's open it up for questions and answers for the next. Uh, let's say. Uh, 10 or 15 minutes or so. Uh, any questions, now is the time to ask them. Nick, uh, Rick Nolan is going to be nice enough and give me a uh, uh, an answer. Okay, so Rick says the ones you were using, uh, you answered my question. Okay, thanks, great. Thank you, Rick. Sorry about that. Uh, but yes, uh, so all the commands that I'm using, the R key for radius, the you know, uh, entering a value, comma, another value is our width and height of a square. Um, 
all of those keyboard shortcuts you can find. You can actually learn more about the keyboard shortcuts for each tool by either opening the tool and clicking on the get help on this. If there is a keyboard shortcut, when it takes you to that tool page, if there's a keyboard shortcut, it will identify that keyboard shortcut in the instructions, uh, but also a quick reference guides cheat sheet uh, up in the help section, uh, keyboard shortcuts. It'll pull up a cheat sheet <coughs> of all the keyboard commands, depending on the operation that you are wanting to do. So, all right. Great question, William Wallace. So last week, uh, last week uh, I announced uh, Spindle TV and, uh, you know, said, hey, it's not secure yet. Don't go there shopping or anything like that. Uh, and, you know, I got to add some more models and projects to it. William says, hey, uh, how you come along with the store? Uh, the store, as far as the projects and everything are coming along, and they'll be up, up soon because uh, uh, for all those people that did subscribe, I've, I've had a few that come in. Thank you very much. Um, you can subscribe through the digitalwoodcarver.com website. Uh, but, um, and by the way, disclaimer, Digital Woodcarver has no uh, part in this, uh, you know, your subscriptions and all with Spindle TV and everything. All the money, transactions and everything is handled by Spindle TV. Uh, and handled by me. Your agreement is with me, you the user, me, uh, Laney, doing business at Spindle TV. Digital Wood Carver plays no role in that. The only role they play is the role of promoting Spindle TV, you know, because it, it, it's, you know, we, we're basically, we're designed originally for their customers and stuff. Um, so if you do go to digitalwoodcarver.com to the training page to subscribe or uh, schedule a training and everything, uh, that transaction is handled through me. You know, it, it's through Stripe and PayPal secure connections and all through me and everything, but digital wood carver plays no role and has, uh, you know, nothing to do with that. Your agreement with me. Um, and, uh, but stores coming on fine. As far as the security, the digital, uh, the Spindle TV website, Spindle TV.com website is not secure yet. So don't shop on there just yet. Uh, I thought it was just going to be as simple as drag and drop an SSL certificate on there, but no, there's a little actual process. I went for the highest, uh, SSL certificate uh, with the highest rate of insurance, uh, you know, coverage and, uh, you know, security. It runs around $400 a year uh, uh, for it and everything. And there's actually a vetting process. They have to go through and vet and make sure that my business is my business. I am who I am and I'm, I'm you know, an upstanding guy and all. So they're working on that vetting process and uh, it's going to take a couple of days to get it done. So I will make an announcement when it is ready. Uh, so for right now, don't go shopping yet or anything. And if you have subscribed uh, and uh, you're wondering about the year two projects that you get each month, uh, I'll have those ready for you here before too long uh, that you'll be able to go and download and everything. So great question, William. Thanks for that. Uh, let's see here. Camaro, is there a way to use the offset tool to offset a square or rectangle and have the corners radius, radius, say an eighth of an inch? All right. So, uh, good question. So what, uh, Dave Garbett, yes, you can subscribe. Now you would go to the digitalwoodcarver.com website. You'd click on inspiration and learning and click on the training page and you can scroll down to the training page and, uh, you can, uh, subscribe there on this. It's at the bottom of the training page and everything. You can pick your subscription option and change and, and do that there. Uh, so Camaro says, uh, Hey, is there a way to use the offset tool to offset a square or rectangle and have the corners radius by only an eighth of an inch or, or what have you? If I understood that question correctly, uh, uh, here's my best. Um, thanks Rick. I appreciate you coming in and watching, uh, and everything. Um, let's go in and let's see if we can do this. So I'm going to come into my rectangle tool and I'm going to, uh, with square corners, I'm going to come in and, draw a rectangle, whatever size. Now, just so you know, uh, Camaro, if I use the offset tool and everything, and let's say I offset outward an eighth of an inch. Okay. Uh, when I offset, it's going to create a radius automatically on that offset. Now, what is that radius? Well, let's come in. I offset it an eighth of an inch, but let's come in and look at our radius. If I come in here and, uh, select that, uh, it's an eighth inch radius. Okay. So you just offset it by an eighth of an inch to get that eighth inch radius on that corner. 
Now, if I come in and if I were offsetting inward, if I were offsetting inward by that eighth of an inch, uh, when it offsets inward, it's going to pretty much maintain uh, its square corners and everything. Um, it's, uh, you know, I could go onto my fillet tool and I could add, you know, not a, <laughs> not a dog bone fillet, a normal fillet. I could come in and, you know, add a radius to it or what have you. But uh, it inward, it won't radius. Outward, it will uh, radius unless and if you want to offset outward and not have rounded corners or radius corners, make sure you have create sharp corners checked. That way, when you offset and you offset outward, if you have create sharp corner sharp corners checked, it's going to create the offset with the sharp corner instead of the radius corner. So now by offsetting it by an eighth of an inch, you get that eighth inch radius, uh, Camaro. Let me know if if that answers your question. <clears throat> All right. So uh, Baron Lynn says, uh, has it or is it even possible for our machines to handle a larger laser that can be purchased from you through Digital Woodcarver? Currently, right now, the only laser we have, uh, Baron, is an eight or a six watt laser. Um, there are larger, I think there's a nine watt or even a 10 watt out there. We do not manufacture anything larger than the eight watt. Uh, when we go past our eight watt laser, we go into our laser machines, our 60 watt and our 90 watt lasers, which are actual separate machines. So currently right now from digital wood carver, there is not a larger laser available than the six watt laser. Uh, but I believe there are larger lasers, uh, you know, wattage lasers out there as far as being able to retrofit it to the digital wood carver. Uh, that would have to be something that I could, I'd have to research and get back to on that. All right. Great questions. Good questions, guys. Good questions. Um, for those of you that are watching and uh, uh, I appreciate you. I appreciate you coming in and ooh, look at that hairdo. Oh, you can't see me. Good. Uh, let's uh, let's pop over here so you can see me. Um, I do appreciate you uh, coming in and watching. Hopefully you pick up little tips or little tricks or little how to's. Uh, you know, it's not necessarily about the project. We've got very three very plain plant stands that are actually pretty the one plant stand the 24 inch one it's actually really i like the layout of it and everything that's why i, I chose that i'm going to draw my own uh, uh design and everything for that but i like the way the legs kind of sprawl out at the you know at the at the bottom and everything and everything uh but uh very simple projects but it's not necessarily the project it's how hey if i have two pieces if i have a tendon and a mortise that i need to fit together how do i make that happen uh well one you can't fit a round peg into a square hole. And when you cut out that pocket, that mortise, it's going to have round radius corners instead of square corners. So you're going to have to use your dog bone fillet tool uh, to um, account for that, uh, to give that bit a place somewhere to go uh, and everything to, um, so we can get those two pieces to fit together. Now, also when you're creating your tool pass and all, uh, generally you're going to need to give yourself an allowance of some sort on that pocket cut, that mortise cut. When you do the pocket tool path, you're going to have to give yourself an allowance. If you don't, those two parts are, it's going to be super tight. You won't have any room for glue or anything like that. It's going to be super tight for them to fit together. The allowance, like if I have a, uh, but I'm, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. bear with me. If I have a mortise here and I put my fillets on there, doo -doo 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 -doo. they're very small fillets. They're there. Oh, wait, hold on. Dag gum it. Dag gum it. Square corners, not rounded corners. Let's get rid of that rectangle there. And if I put my fillets on there, my, oh, I'm in not, the, that's why I'm not in dog bone mode. Dog bone fillet, there, 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 and there. Okay, let's zoom back out so you can see. All right, so if I have a rectangle here, let's call this, let's say this is my mortise and everything, and I've got my fillets and everything in there. Um, when I do my pocket cut, 
let's say my pocket is a half inch deep uh, and I'm going to use a eighth inch end mill because I have a 16th inch radius on my fillets that uh, they play a role together. Um, if I, I'm just going to do this in one pass just for time's sake, but you would do your passes appropriately. But if I come in here and I calculate this uh, after selecting the proper vector, <laughs> if I uh, calculate this and everything, um, if we look at this in the 2D view, okay, if we look at this in the 2D view and we look at that pocket and everything, um, when you see all these arrows and all, that's wireframe mode when you're looking at a toolpath. If we come up here and change from wireframe to solid view, it's going to give us a solid view and show us where our router's cutting and stuff. Now, if I cut this pocket just to exact size and everything, I'm going to I'm going to be playing hell getting those two points uh, together, you know, those two pieces together. So what I want to do is I want to give myself a small allowance. Now, I generally start out with a negative. Negative means I want to go over the line uh, 0 0.005. I usually go small. It's a 0 0.005. And then if I need to go a little bit more 0 0.01, you know, I want a nice friction fit. I don't want to be too loose. So I don't I don't go too big right away. But if I calculate this with a five thousandths of an inch allowance, um, then what that does is it allows that bit to open that pocket up and, you know, a little bit more uh, that five thousandths of an inch more so that, you know, I have room for my parts to fit together nicely. I'm not beating them together, you know, and if that's not enough, then I could go, you know, ten thousandths of an inch and, you know, but basically just opens it up. It allows that bit to open that pocket up just a little bit more so that tenon can fit in. Uh, because if you don't allow an allowance, then your two parts are going to be cut to the exact same size and it's going to be, you know, crazy trying to fit them together. So, <laughs> and all that. Um, now, all right. So real quick, Jeff jumps in and says, what thickness wood will that six way watt laser cut through? No thickness wood. Uh, uh, Jeff, that is an engraving laser. It is not a cutting laser. It will not cut through. It's a six watt laser to cut through. You need at least 60, you know, 40, 60, 90 Watts, uh, things like that, uh, to, uh, give you an idea to cut through quarter inch thick material, at least 60 Watts, uh, laser, uh, to cut through half inch material, at least 90 Watts or more. Um, you know, a six watt laser is a, an engraving laser. It will not cut through wood, the material. Okay. So it's an engraving laser. All right. So, um, uh, uh, Calusa custom says, are you live every Tuesday or Wednesday? So it's every Tuesday night from seven to 9 PM, seven fifteen to 9 PM or nine 30 in this case, 10 PM, you know, so however long it runs is how long I talk, but, uh, usually it's every Tuesday night. Uh, however, uh, yesterday I was doing machine deliveries, uh, in uh, the Tampa, Florida area. And, uh, I started deliveries uh, around seven in the morning. I did not get back till one o'clock the next morning back to Ocala. So I was not back here in time for the seven o'clock class. So it had to get postponed to tonight. Um, and, uh, so, but generally it's every Tuesday night from seven fifteen PM Eastern time till whenever I stop talking, which is going to be in about three minutes. Uh, but, uh, tonight it got rescheduled. Um, it got rescheduled to tonight because I was not available last night to conduct the class, but yes, every week I'm live. All right. So Jeff jumps in and says, Hey, I found and bought the drawings, uh, for to cut out. And I want to use a CNC and set up a time with you. Should I send you what I want, uh, to be, uh, to do forehand? Uh, beforehand. Yes. So, um, if you are, so if you're scheduling time with me, if you're scheduling time with me, uh, there is a place where you can, uh, uh, up on the schedulers where you can upload a file, uh, or an image or what have you to send to me, or you could just simply email me at sales, S A L E S at digitalwoodcarver.com or, or, Laney.Shaughnessy at SpindleTV.com, either one of the two. You could email me your file beforehand so I can take a look at it, and uh, that way I can better help you when we actually train together. So, yes. 
So once again, uh, I will throw it in the comment section. Uh, my email address is either sales at digital wood carver.com or alternatively, uh, Laney uh, Shaughnessy at spindle tv.com. So either one of those two uh, will get to me. Okay. All right. So, uh, okay. So Dave says, Lenny, I signed up, but I can't access the project page. Do you have to do something first? Uh, Dave, if you just heard what I said, the project page is not ready uh, for downloading the two projects. It's not ready yet. Uh, I got to wait till my SSL certificate comes in to secure the website and everything. Uh, so uh, it will be ready over, you know, here shortly and I'll put out an announcement and I'll be sending all the subscribers an email to let you know when the files are ready and stuff, but it's not ready yet. Uh, so your subscription, you know, is for training. You can set up your training and for those two projects a month. Uh, but the project store is uh, for the subscribers. The free items is not ready yet. Uh, and the store itself is not ready yet on uh, SpindleTV.com because I'm waiting for my SSL certificate to get uh, finalized to make the site completely secure for you guys and girls. So you'll have to be patient. Okay. All righty. Uh, and uh, oh, no problem, Dave. Dave, you don't, have, don't ever, Dave, Dave's like, I'm sorry, I left the room for a little bit. You don't have to, have to apologize. I just wanted to explain it to you again. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> you don't ever, you guys don't ever have to apologize to me about anything. Uh, you know, uh, it's just, um, uh, wanted to, uh, I just said it uh, and, uh, you, you know, if you guys didn't ask it, it's good that I repeat it anyway. Uh, so I will be putting out an announcement, especially to the subscribers and everything and to everybody when SpindleTV.com is officially ready for use. Uh, I just I thought it was going to be a drag and drop kind of thing for the SSL. But with the SSL that I chose uh, and uh, the level of security and insurance, uh, you know, it's over one million dollar policy and all that stuff. Um, uh, it required some vetting and all that stuff. So they're doing that and uh, then we'll get it set up and stuff and I'll let you guys know. All right, everybody. Well, listen, um, the, uh, I want to thank you once again. I really do appreciate your support uh, for Spindle TV and for me. Uh, hopefully these classes, you are taking something away from them and can learn uh, and just a very nice uh, little thing. So uh, Calusa Custom Candidates, I believe this is uh, one of your uh, first time attending. It's great if it is, uh, but um, uh you say that you and your husband watch all the time, so you're forgiven. Okay, so you're, it's not your first time, but that name, uh, unless you come in under a separate name or something, that's the first time I've seen the Calusa Custom Cabinets. It's a very cool name, by the way. Uh, thank you very much uh, for watching and supporting. And all of you guys, thank you very much for watching and supporting. Uh, Ron, I appreciate that uh, great session. Uh, thank you, that kudos. But hopefully you took something away from this. Fillet tools and, and, and sizing things up. Using your calculator, remember... If you're trying to scale something, if it's like something that comes in small and you're trying to scale it to fit uh, your certain material, like if this was project was a, a make CNC project that was designed for eighth inch thick material, right? Eighth inch thick. That's what they designed that project for. But your material, you're, you're cutting it out of plywood and your plywood is only point uh, one one, right? You can take your point. One one material, divide that by the 0.125 and you'll get a percentage and you can go into that size box and you can size that up by that percentage and it'll scale it up to fit your material or scale it down to fit your material one way or the other. It'll scale it to fit your material. That way your slots are the right size and all that stuff and everything. Uh, so nice little uh, way to utilize the, the math and stuff uh, and, and things. Uh, so. Uh, being able to move those nodes, man, being able to select a certain amount of nodes or nodes, one node or multiple nodes and, and drag a little bit and then type in a value, how far you want to move them up. That's awesome. That's a game changer and stuff. Being able to move things over very easily like that node editing mode. That's a nice feature. Thanks you, Vetrick, for adding that. But uh, uh, all very cool things. Hopefully you're able to take away these little tips and tricks. And until next time, it's 10 o'clock. Have a great night. We'll see you soon. Oh, okay. Camaro 375. There you go. Uh, listen, now I put two and two together. So, all right. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you very much. All right, everybody. Till next time.
Y'all have a great evening. See you Tuesday.